Good morning. On this brisk, snowy Sunday and whole weekend, it's good to gather in the warmth and fe of fellowship and God's unwavering love. I know the road conditions have probably delayed a few folks in arriving. I can still see some people coming in in the parking lot, so the ushers will welcome them in as, uh, as we move on into the service. We welcome each of you joining in worship in whatever form that may be today. And today is Eternity Sunday, which we usually celebrate on the last Sunday of the church year before Advent. It's a time to remember those who have passed on in the last year. It's a way to grieve together and to remember God's promises. And in that circle and cycle of life, we also celebrate new arrivals into our church community as well. And uh, so celebrate with Shannon and Mark in the arrival of Hope Marie last Sunday evening. We're so very, very thankful for um, safe arrival and uh, Shannon unexpected surgery, but is, uh, is doing well and as I was talking to Grandma Connie, a minute before the church service started, we saw Shannon and the baby um, on, uh, on the screen. So they were uh, watching from home. So we just give so much uh, praise and celebration for her safe arrival and uh, celebrate with Grandma and Grandpa Connie and Dan and all the extended, extended family. We trust that each person worshiping with us will feel comfortable here and truly truly experience God's presence. We acknowledge that we are on the traditional territory of the Anawashambi, Haudenosaunee, and neutral peoples. We give thanks for their stewardship of this land through many, many generations, and we humbly accept the responsibility to continue the care of God's creation. Our ushers are at the back by the double doors to assist at any time throughout the service, and we have washrooms just off the sanctuary. And we also have a small uh, activity area um, just over by the stair railing at the back for any children that might enjoy that time. Uh, we'll take a few minutes to um, look at announcements. If anybody has something they'd like to highlight, I invite you to come forward now. There's a few specifics. Um, Connie Finn um, actually has asked if a few folks could give her a hand right after the service to bring the Christmas tree from the shed in the parking lot over here um, uh, that's going to be put up and decorated. And um, we also want to uh, mention to the ladies in the congregation a reminder that this Wednesday evening is the annual ladies Christmas salad supper and we're invited to come for an evening of good food, friendly conversations and some um, music by a ladies quartet. So we're invited to bring our favorite salad to share uh, for 6.30 on Wednesday. And then looking ahead a couple of weeks uh, to Sunday the 4th um, is a Christmas coffee time. So after the service, um, we'll, we're invited to stay for a time of fellowship and uh, enjoy some uh, Christmas treats. So each household is asked to bring about a half a dozen uh, sweet treats to share and, uh, and have some time together in, as we approach Christmas. As we quiet our hearts now, we will enjoy a peaceful time of music and focus on the light of our Christ candle.
I invite you to share in the responsive call to worship as projected, um, and uh, you will read the part of the people. This is uh, Psalm 121, a great comfort at all times. I raise my eyes toward the mountains. Where will my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. God won't let your foot slip. Your protector won't fall asleep on the job. The sun won't strike you during the day, nor will the moon at night. The Lord will protect you from all evil. The Lord will protect your very life. The Lord will protect you on your journeys, whether going or coming, from now and forevermore. Let's pray. We come to worship you, God, and we long for comfort. In your arms this morning, can our distress subside? In the name of Jesus, you hold us as your children and you promise us life, life eternal, life with you. May these promises guide our thoughts and our prayers this morning. Amen. I'll invite our song leaders for our first gathering hymn. Join if you're able and stand to sing Great is Thy Faithfulness 419. <clears throat> Thank you. 
I'm reading from the message, Romans 8, 35, 37, and 39. Do you think anyone is going to be able to drive a wedge between us and Christ's love for us? There is no way. Not trouble, not hard times, not hatred, not hunger, not homelessness, not bullying threats, not backstabbing. None of this phases us because Jesus loves us. I'm absolutely convinced that nothing, nothing living or dead, angelic or demonic, today or tomorrow, high or low, thinkable or unthinkable, absolutely nothing can get between us and God's love because of the way that Jesus, our Master, has embraced us. We pause now to offer our gratitude to God for all that we have been given. And we just want to note over Advent, we are invited to give to our Christmas sharing fund here at Wellesley Mennonite. These funds are gathered and distributed locally to those in need. If you have a monetary gift for today's offering uh, with you, please place it in the basket on the table at the end of the middle aisle after the service. I'll invite you to pray with me now. Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you we can always trust in you. You are an abundant God, and out of your great mercy, you have given us so much. We give you this offering today to honor your kingdom. May be a great blessing to many. Extend and multiply its reach across the street and around the world. We ask all this in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Number 660 in, uh, in our uh, Voices Together book, The Lord's My Shepherd, and you may join and stand and sing if you wish. Thank you. 
I'm reading from the message, John 14, verses 1 to 4, 6 to 7, and 27. Don't let this rattle you. You trust God, don't you? Trust me. There is plenty of room for you in my Father's home. If that weren't so, would I have told you that I'm on my way to get a room ready for you? And if I'm on my way to get your room ready, I'll come back and get you so you can live where I live. And you already know the road I'm taking. Jesus said, I am the road, also the truth, also the life. No one gets to the Father apart from me. If you really knew me, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you, you do know him. You've even seen him. Peace. I do not leave you the way you, you're used to being left. Feeling abandoned, bereft, so don't be upset, don't be distraught. The psalmist whose comforting words gathered us for worship this morning was speaking to a people needing the assurance of God's presence and help in their time of trouble. Throughout the 150 chapters, the psalmists offer faithful prayers, deep laments, and psalms of praise and thanksgiving. And a gift the psalmists offer is their capacity to shape yearnings into prayers at a time when God's people, as us, struggle to articulate our deepest needs or greatest suffering. (coughs) And this is not quite the case, though, for the Old Testament prophets, whose writing occupy a big space of the Hebrew scriptures. The prophets were messengers of God. Their no-holds-bar, hard-hitting messages were hard on the ear, equally hard on the hearts of God's people. Not so unlike the prophets of today who are calling our attention to rampant racism, global warming, and more. While many of the Old Testament prophets are best known for railing against God's people for their acts of injustice or waywardness, the prophet Jeremiah was known as the weeping prophet. And Jeremiah had good reason for a heavy heart. His prophecy emerged during the time when the Babylonian Empire had risen as a mighty world power. And as was characteristic for the empire when they took over an area, they exiled the cream of the crop of the population, displacing them to a foreign land far from home. The disruption to community shattered family rituals. Exile fractured connectedness of relationships. It jarred the human need for belonging God woven into humanity's DNA, exile was a dark, bleak time in Israel's history. Who were God's people now that they were separated from the temple? Who were God's people becoming? Who were God's people in this foreign land where a chair at the family dinner table sat empty? This place where family ribbing was silenced this empty space where loss and grief was deep. What brightness did the future hold? Could God's people hold on to hope? God's people didn't just grieve for their homes. They grieved deeply the life that they had known and shared together. Life enriched by family celebrations, relationships, community, grandma's cookies, a shared faith, Individually and as a community, God's people suffered. Their laments, their woundedness were their deepest prayers. Where was God when displacement and grief was so jagged and raw? Where was God when hearts were so fragile and broken? The prophet Jeremiah carried the grief of God's people He was surrounded daily by the sufferings of the community. God had a mission for Jeremiah, and it was to help God's people rebuild their lives following devastation. 
And while Jeremiah's prophecy is known as the Book of Tears, it is also known for its message of profound hope. I would invite us to listen to these words of the prophet as recorded in Jeremiah chapter 31. Into the deep suffering and displacement, the prophet proclaimed, The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says their Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, says the Lord, I will put my law within them. I will write it on their hearts. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest says the Lord. The weeping prophet of hope announces God will establish a new covenant with God's people. The old covenant of law was broken, but the new would be established, leading to inward transformation of human hearts, which would allow people to know God and to follow in God's good ways. Well, long years passed, many, many years, and God remembered God's covenant promise. God came to earth in Jesus, born into a despairing and hurting world. And God in flesh healed eyes with mud and spit. He taught in parables. He confounded the authorities, and he preached a gospel of peace. And according to the Gospels, on the night Jesus was betrayed, he took a loaf of bread and he said to the disciples and by extension us, this is my body, which is broken for you. And following, Jesus took a cup of wine and he said, this cup that is poured for you is the new covenant in my blood. And in this way, Jesus ensured that all who believe in God and God's goodness and mercy God's forgiveness and grace would have an eternal home within the very heart of God. Through the cross, God is revealed as one who suffers with us, the one true God who remains with us in the spirit as holy comforter, who ministers compassion and healing and hope. God's covenant fulfilled through the suffering and death and resurrection shapes our identity as an Easter people who are invited to live boldly into hope. And while hope does not diminish the sting of death and loss, we confess that hope is a gift of God revealed to us as restoration and the newness of life. So we come before God on Eternity Sunday with tears, with heavy hearts, with memories, and we are attentive to the sharp edges of our grief and our brokenness. We come and we stand alongside and support those who are grieving the loss of dear loved ones. And together we proclaim God's reign is eternal. God's grace is for all time, for the living and for those who have passed on to eternal life with Christ our Lord. Because the power of God's love broke the chains of death, God's Easter people live into hope and God's gift of resurrection and new life. Because this is who the God of eternal love has created us to be. Let us pray. O Lord, our God, we worship you and offer our thanks for the company of apostles, the prayers of the psalmists, the message of the prophets, and all who have served faithfully in your church and in your world. 
Today we remember those who lived and labored and loved among us. We remember those who are now gathered in your eternal peace and love and hope. We thank you for your boundless love in Christ, for his resurrection, for the gift of eternal life, and for your spirit of compassion which never leaves us. We offer our prayers in the strong name of the resurrected Lord. Amen. Well, I would invite you to take your Voices Together songbook, or you could turn to the back of your bulletin for today, or it is also projected on the wall. And I would invite us to join together in the litany as provided. O ancient of days, you have been our dwelling place from generation to generation. Here in your ground of love, even death becomes a time of seed planting from which new life eternally springs forth. We give thanks, O God, for your life and love that have no end. On this day, we remember those who have gone before us in faith, hope, and love. We remember those who have joined us in the communion of the church and others we have joining in the communion of life and we offer their names now aloud sorry aloud or in the silence of our hearts O oh god in their death we feel the pain of absence in their death through the unity of christ we also know the joy of continued presence. May the great cloud of witnesses bless and sustain our daily living. We give thanks, O God, for your life and love that have no end. Amen. I would invite now Lloyd Johnson's nephew, Dan Gingrich, to light Lloyd's eternity candle, and our worship and remembrance will continue as printed in the order of service. Dan. My cousin Randy asked me if I would read a reflection he wrote in memory of his father, Lloyd Yancey. Randy writes, When I hear the word salt of the earth, I think of my father, Lloyd Yancey. A man of incredible faith, Dad was always worshipping with music, whether as chorister or singing and playing his guitar. Dad always put his faith on display. As a founding member of Wellesley Mennonite Church, he made a tough decision to move from Shantz Mennonite to attend a get-together at the Fellowship Hall in Wellesley on September the 7th, 1975. This was the beginning of more than 45 years of membership at Wellesley Mennonite Church. With Mom, they exemplified incredible faith throughout their 70 years of marriage and beyond. Dad always found humor in life and continued to make jokes until he was called home. Our wife, our mother, our friend, our aunt. Esther Shear was a wonderful mother. She had three rambunctious boys to look after, and uh, I don't know if we kept her under control or if she kept us under control. <laughs> she was a great cook, as uh, the Mennonite family all knows. The mother is the center point of the meal every day. 
And she was a great woman that showed us boys how to uh, help our wives down the road in sharing cooking, cleaning, looking after uh, sewing, not so much knitting, but sewing. She loved to travel. Mom and Dad liked camping. They liked to travel around. They went to Europe the year that uh, the boys got married. They liked to go camping with us in the trailer, and they liked to go out west to visit family and friends. And they showed their love together. Mom and Dad had a great relationship, and we just enjoyed seeing them and listening to their precious words of encouragement to their boys and to the rest of the family. We miss her very much, but we know she's in a happy place and she's there preparing us a way for us as well. I'm reading this reflection on behalf of Pearl Kipfer um, and my mother of Patty Aulis. Our congregation adopted Pearl as one of our own when Riverdale Mennonite Church closed several years ago. Care team visitors, pastors, appreciated regular visits with Pearl at Nithview Home. Anytime Pastor Kara visited Pearl, even when in her final days, Pearl always said, Kara, the Lord has been good to me. The scripture read today was read at Pearl's Memorial Service, which was held at Zurich Mennonite Church, April 9th, 2022. It's Isaiah 43, 1 to 5. But now thus say, says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you, because you are precious in my sight and honored, and I love you. I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east and from the west. I will gather you. Please stand for number 653, Nothing is Lost on the Breath of God.
Harold lived a life with deep appreciation and love for nature, for family, for friends, for faith. He also had a deep love for sunrises and sunsets, which he enjoyed from the family farm. And his widow, Cheryl, has asked for this scripture to be read today. Psalm 113. Praise the Lord. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time on and forevermore, from the rising of the sun to its setting. The name of the Lord is to be praised. Amen. If you'd know my mom and dad, um, they had everything planned for their funerals. And uh, so I'm going to read a scripture um, that mom had picked out. Um, they had their songs picked out and, uh, and their definite wishes. So uh, this is Psalm 84. Um, Adam read this uh, 1 to 4. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may have her young. A place near your altar, Lord Almighty, my King and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are forever praising you. Um, Mom loved nature. Uh, she was a family expert when it came to birds, uh, weather, folklore, and gardening. She would see the clouds in the middle of the summer, and she'd say, those are snow clouds and three months or four months from now it's going to snow <laughs> anyway that's a pretty good prediction isn't it um, anyway um, mom expressed her gifts of creativity through painting uh, decorating dollhouses sewing quilting flower arranging and landscaping um, mom more recently uh, spent most of her time in her apartment um, she had a third floor window overlooking a garden that she maintained um, in the tree near the garden, we had bird feeders for her enjoyment. Um, and in the past year or so, when she wasn't as mobile and her oxygen hose didn't take her quite as far in her, in her apartment, um, we got a flat screen TV and she live streamed the feeders at Cornell University, if anybody's ever done that. And so she watched the birds for hours. Um, she even put on the Cornell one in uh, the tropical one where she could watch parrots and things like that, but mostly cardinals and blue jays and, and uh, she, she enjoyed that so much. Anyway, mom inspired our whole family um, to enjoy and identify birds. And so they're all, the whole family, they're bird, bird feeders and watchers. And uh, her kind, gentle ways will truly be missed. I'm reading this scripture on behalf of uh, Susan Rose and uh, in the passing of Don Gerber, um, who will always be the loving father of Susan. In the months before Don Gerber passed away, he regu regularly asked his children to read Psalm 91 to him. He must have found comfort in this passage. Psalm 91. Whoever rests in the, rests in the shadow of the mo Most High God will be kept safe by the Mighty One. I will say about the Lord, he is my place of safety. He is like a fort to me. He is my God, I trust in him. He will certainly save you from hidden traps and from deadly sickness. He will cover you with his wings. Under the feathers of his wings you will find safety. He is faithful. He will keep you safe like a shield or a tower. You won't have to be afraid of the terrors that come during the night. You won't have to fear the arrows that come at you during the day. 
You won't have to be afraid of the sickness that attacks in the darkness. You won't have to fear the plague that destroys at noon. A thousand may fall dead at your side. Ten thousand may fall near your right hand. But no harm will come to you. You will see with your own eyes how God punishes sinful people. Suppose you say, the Lord is the one who keeps me safe. Suppose you let the Most High God be a home to you. Then no harm will come to you. No terrible plague will come near you, near your tent. The Lord will command his angels to take good care of you. They will lift you up in their hands. Then you won't trip over a stone. You will walk on lions and cobras. You will crush mighty lions and poisonous snakes. The Lord says, I will save the one who loves me. I will keep him safe because he trusts in me. He will call out to me and I will answer him. I will, I will be with him in times of trouble. I will save him and honor him. I will give him a long, full life. I will save him. Thank you to each family circle for participating today. It's my prayer that this time of remembering brings healing to you, even through tears and an aching heart. Rituals can be a powerful way of helping us name the pain we feel, giving us courage to share it and to walk through it together. Today, through the ritual of candle lighting, we practice our faith and our hope in God's promise to remain with us and restore us and grace us with new life. So just a few words of instruction. And to those of you who are joining us from home or later from our YouTube channel, you might want to quick grab a candle, have something ready. In just a few moments, I will invite our elder Dan Liebel to come forward again. But until then, um, as music is played this morning and we sing together, all who wish are invited to come forward to either one of these two tables and light a candle, either in memory of a loved one or a person or a situation which you would like to hold in prayer before God. There are a number of congregational prayer needs which were shared this morning through an email, and in response you might want to light a candle for one of those needs. All are invited to participate just come to the table, take a candle from the back so we're not reaching past lit candles, light your candle and place it back on the, on the plate. And we will just take all the time we need to be present and to participate as we're singing and remembering and lighting candles. So Dan, I would invite you to come forward at this time.
Let's turn our hearts towards God in prayer. Eternal God, you are our God and we are your people. You have claimed us as your own and have placed a seal on our hearts. You nurture and sustain us in the garden of life. Living God, we thank you for your gift of eternal life and for those who, having served you well, now rest from their labors. Today we give thanks for those who during the last 12 months have died and entered into eternal glory, including Lloyd, Esther, Pearl, Harold, Martha, Dawn, and those whom we hold in our hearts. We thank you for their life and love and rejoice for them, all is well, and all manner of things will be well. Be near to those who are grieving. Hold them close. Fill them with your comfort and peace. <coughs> Compassionate God, you attend to the wounded places of our hearts and lives. You grieve with us in our losses and our fears. You journey with us in our celebrations and our sorrows. You are close even in the mundane routines of our days. You delight in us. You love us. We pray for our siblings in faith in need of healing grace. We name them before you in the silence of our hearts. We also pray for our households of faith, the Cook families, the Cluthy family. May each family rest in your peace and be filled with your joy. May love rule in their hearts and fill their homes. We also pray for this world, for the places and precious people who are striving to recover from hurricanes 
late fall snowstorms, and more. We pray for peace among nations and pray that you would make us instruments of that peace. Eternal God, you are our God and we are your people. Continue to write your law of love on our hearts and transform our lives. Give us an unwavering passion for justice, a tenacious faith that will not rest until the hungry are fed, until the oppressed find relief, until the outsider finds welcome. And hear us now as we pray as you've taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the face of God shine on you, 844. Um, please stand if you're able. I'm not sure how familiar this song is to all of us, so we're just going to work through it together. <laughs> strengthened by God's constant presence. Be bearers of hope, light, and love. Bring and share peace, caring, and joy. We go in the name of Jesus. Amen. Mm -hmm.